Okie dokie guys, so this is samples and before we do that I promised in my last video on moles and if you've not seen that video I would definitely watch that first. That goes through the did my elephant suck my anti method, obviously. But the, uh, I promised at the end of that one that I'd go through a question I left up at the end. So just very quickly I'll go through that and then I'll get on to samples. And this will be a good recap of how to do a moles question, which is a samples question. So uh, this was the, the, a smaller version of the question I put up at the end of last video. The method I would use is did my elephant suck my ante? The did stands for decimeters and data. So straight away, I'm going to write down my balanced equation. Don't forget to balance the molar ratios. Uh, this is already balanced. And then I write down my data underneath the thing it's talking about. And don't forget, straight away, convert all of your centimeters into decimeters. If you save it till later, you'll forget, and then your answer will be wrong by a factor of a thousand, which is pretty damn wrong. So convert it straight away now. Did my, the my stands for moles, and your first moles equation always starts moles equals. So let's have a look. What can I find the moles of? Well, HCl by doing volume times concentration. If I was told the mass, I'd use uh, moles equals mass over MR. If I was told the volume of a gas, it'd be volume of a gas divided by 24. So there's only three to choose from. And that would be 0.1. I then did my elephant. The elephant stands for the equation step. So I use my big numbers, my molar ratios, or my stoichiometric ratios, if you want to be fancy, to figure out what the relationship between the moles is. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So I have the same number of moles of sodium hydroxide. Did my elephant suck? The suck stands for samples and dilutions. There wasn't one in this question, this next beast of a question, that's got one in. That's what we're going to do today. Did my elephant suck my? The second moles equation always starts with the thing you're trying to find out. So look at the question. The question says, what is the concentration of sodium hydroxide? So this is going to start concentration of sodium hydroxide equals, and it's moles over volume, bang in your numbers, and you'll get your answer, which is 0.4. And then don't forget, did my elephant suck my ante? The ante stands for your answer. You've got to check two things. Have you put the units down, moles per decimeter cubed, and is it no less than three significant figures? Well, 0.4 is all the answer is. If it was 0.4444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444444
mostly in exams. You're not going to be doing this though, you're going to be working backwards. So the question will say, you start with four centimetres, we take a one centimetre sample. You'll then be able to figure out how many moles are in the one centimetre, and we need to get back to the four centimetres. And so what do we do? We multiply by four. So if you're dealing with samples, first of all, decide the sample factor, the bigger volume over the smaller volume, and then just figure out, do I multiply or do I divide it? And if you're going from small to big, you've got to multiply. If you're going from big to small, you've got to divide it. And that's all we're going to do. There is a few other things to think about, though. Sorry about the noise. There's some building work going on outside. It's massively annoying. So we just said that my number of moles will change if I do a sample. Look, I've gone from four to one. And if the number of moles changes, then of course my mass is going to change as well. So if I've got less moles, I've got less mass. If I've got more moles, I've got more mass. But will the concentration change with my sample? And the answer is no, because let's have a look. Concentration equals moles divided by volume. So if I do my moles over volume here, it'll be 4 divided by, don't forget this needs to be in decimeters, so 0.0. 0 0.04, sorry, 0 0.004. Whereas here, my thing, so that's going to give me a 0. Point, sorry, it's going to give me a thousand, is what we're going to get there. Whereas here, it's going to be 1 divided by 0 0.001, which again equals a thousand. So I end up with the same concentration in both of them. So concentration doesn't change. And you can think about it um, just in terms of going from 4 to 1 there. That's samples. So sample factor, and then just decide, do I multiply or divide? But only concentration um, stays the same. Your moles and your mass will change. We've also got something called dilutions, which are kind of the same, but also different at the same time. So a dilution is where you start with a small volume. Let's say I've got one marble in there. This can be 25 centimeters cubed. And I then fill that up with water. So I've still only got my one mole of chemical. I just now fill it up with water. And let's say I make that 250 centimeters cubed. So let's have a look what changes now with a dilution. With a dilution, has my number of moles changed? Well, no. You can kind of think about it like this. If you've got some um, cordial, like some orange cordial, or some Vimto, or something like that, and you have a certain amount of that Vimto, and I then add water, does that give me more Vimto? More molecules of Vimto? No, it doesn't, does it? It makes the volume greater, but my number of moles of Vimto remains the same. Or if I, put an, if I have an apple in a small bucket of water, and I then tip that apple in a bathtub with more water, I don't get more apples, do I? So my number of moles with dilutions does not change. And if your moles doesn't change, then your mass won't change. However, your concentration will change. So it's the opposite way around to samples. Here, I've got 1 over 0.025. Whereas here, I've got 1 over 0.25. So clearly, they're going to give different answers. So my concentration will change. So let's go through an example question. What you might want to do is try this yourself. Press pause, have a crack at it yourself, and then I'll go through the answer, and you can see where you've gone right and wrong. This is the question there. So pause it now. Have a little go at it, and now I'll pause it. So what we're going to do, let me just get my cheat sheet of calculations. So first of all, we're going to do a diagram with samples. If ever you see something about a sample going on, it really helps to do a diagram. So I'm just going to go for an example of how I would do that. So the student has 25 centimetres, so that's 0.02, in fact, let's do the diagram here. So that's 0.0, if I can draw, Two five decimeters cubed, and that is of magnesium hydroxide. So of my magnesium hydroxide. We then fill that up to 250 centimeters, so 0.25 decimeters cubed. From that, we then take a 25 centimeter sample, so made up to 250, we then take a 25 centimeter sample, so that's 0.025 decimeters cubed. We then titrate that against some nitric acid. So this is supposed to be a burette. I'm terrible at drawing. 
that's a burette, and inside there we've got nitric acid. And it's going to tell us some information about that as well. We've got one mole per decimeter cubed, and it says we, need, we have a tetra of 40 centimeters cubed. So straight away, 0 0.04 decimeters cubed there. So we're now set up to do, and you, mostly your diagram will look something similar to this. If you're doing a titration, you'll always end with this bit here. So that's my data. Let's also do a balanced equation. HNO3 plus MgOH2, two of those is going to go to MgNO32 plus 2H2O. And if you don't know how to balance equations, I've got a, a previous video on that as well. So that's my data and diagram stuff done now. What I can then do, so that's my did my, is I can figure out the moles of something. Well, what can I figure out the moles of? It's going to be HNO3. So moles HNO3 equals CV, which is going to be equal 0.04 times by 1. Don't even need to look at my cheat sheet. That's going to be 0.04 moles. So if you do this diagram in an exam, what it really helps to do is get a coin or a pen lid and just stick it on here to keep track of where you are. I'm going to keep track of where I am using a blue pen mark. So at the moment, I've calculated my number of moles in the titration here. Did my elephant, I don't care about the moles of nitric acid, the question asks me about magnesium hydroxide. So I'm going to convert my moles of nitric acid into my moles of magnesium hydroxide. And if we look at the balanced equation, it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So nitric acid was 0.04, so magnesium hydroxide must be half of that, so 0.02. Now comes the samples and dilutions. Did my elephant suck? So, when I've converted from nitric acid to magnesium hydroxide, I've gone from here to here. Because this is my magnesium hydroxide I was titrating. What we then need to do is we need to go back from here all the way to the original solution. So we need to figure out, in each of these steps, was that a sample or was that a dilution? Because from before, if you remember, that will make a massive difference. Well, going from 0.025 to a bigger volume, that's going to be a dilution. We've added water. Look, it says um, made up to 250 with water. We've added water or any liquid. I then, from my 250 centimetres, I've taken out a smaller sample. So that's a sample. Okay. So we want to get from here to here. So we're going to be going back. So we need to figure out our sample factor from here to here. So is the bigger number, 0.25, divided by the smaller volume, 0.025, which equals 10. So we've got a sample factor of 10. So are we going to need to multiply by our sample factor to get from the number of moles in here to the number of moles in there? Or are we going to need to divide by it? Well, we're going from a smaller sample to a bigger sample. So in a bigger sample, there's going to be more moles, isn't there? So then you need to, we must have to multiply by this. So my sample factor is 10. So what I'm going to do my moles of magnesium hydroxide in here, which is 0.02, multiplied by my sample factor. And that's going to convert it from the moles in here to the moles in there. So that will be 0.2. And I'm now in here. I then need to get from here back to there. So you can see we're kind of working backwards. We're working in reverse from the order the question did it in. So to get from here to there, that's a dilution. Now, does the number of moles change in a dilution? Think back to earlier in the video. No, it doesn't. If I have an apple in a small tub and I stick it in a bath, we said that wouldn't make more apples. So why would it make more moles of chemicals? So the moles in here and here are identical. There's more water in here, but we don't care about the water. We're talking about the moles of chemical. So that is going to give me, I, I take my dilution, but that makes no difference. So dilution factor with moles, there is no dilution factor, so NA, no change. So we're still at 0.2. 
did my elephant suck my, kind of running out of space here, the last mole's equation always starts with what you're trying to find out. We're trying to find out the concentration, so conch of magnesium hydroxide equals moles over volume. I know my moles is 0 0.2. The volume of my initial solution is 0 0.025. And I am going to need my answer sheet for this. That will give us 8. Did my elephant suck my ante? Don't forget units, moles per decimeter cubed. And don't forget sig figs. Well, it's already only 1. If it was like 7, don't round to less than 3. If it was 7 significant figures, don't round to less than 3. So the final answer is a concentration of 8 moles per decimeter cubed. So that's actually ridiculously concentrated. That's like about as high as you can get. It's super concentrated. Okay, guys? So just to, to sum up, with samples, figure out your sample factor and then either multiply or divide by the sample factor depending on whether you're going to the bigger solution or the smaller solution. With dilutions, you don't need to worry about moles because dilution don't change the number of moles. The only things dilution change is the concentration. And you would do that in exactly the same way. You would figure out your dilution factor and then multiply or divide the concentration by that. But with moles, dilutions, you can just ignore only samples. Okay?